Hi guys, so I have just passed my two year investing anniversary. So I've been investing in the stock market for just over two years now and I thought, what better time than now to do a video telling you my lessons learned over the last two years in the hopes that it will help some of you, especially if you're new to investing or just starting your journey out and yeah, hopefully it'll just make it a little bit easier. So the first lesson from me is to remember that the market will always go up and down. So it's really freaky as a beginner investor when you see your investments go down in the red and a lot of people panic sell. That's not what you want to do. You should be investing for the long, long term. And if you look at a chart of the S&P 500 over its lifetime, you will see the dips and the ups and downs. And this also happens with stocks. And of course, there are stocks that won't rebound. But if you've been invested in them for like a year or less, don't panic. Don't sell unless you've got, you know, some news that's really worrying or, you know, you've done your research and you think it is really time to get out. But generally, every single position that I've held has been in the red for some period of time during my two years. So the one thing that I want to mention here is a quote to remember, and it is from Warren Buffet. It is, I will tell you how to become rich. Close the doors, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. And it's a beautiful quote and it gets a lot of mentions in the investing community. And it's true. Those people, including myself, who bought stocks when the market crashed in 2020, have seen the biggest gains on those stocks because we bought when other people were panic selling. So that leads me nicely into the second lesson, which is that it is inevitable that the market will crash. Market crashes happen throughout history and you know, you may be unlucky enough that you've invested just before a market crash, but this is why it's so important not to invest money that you may need in the short term, because you don't want to end up having to sell that money at a loss because you need it there and then and end up making a loss because losses in investments are not real losses until you've sold the investment. The other thing to remember on that point is that sometimes these market crashes will last a few years. So generally you shouldn't really be putting money that you may need anytime in the next five years into the stock market. The next lesson is that it's actually really important to have both dividend and growth stocks in your portfolio. Now, when I first started out, I was all about those dividend companies only. I had no interest really in growth stocks, but I've learned over time that the dividend stocks, especially the proper dividend players, their sort of actual value and the capital gain stuff, it won't really go up and it'll be fairly stable generally. Whereas with growth stocks, when I've had like Tesla and AMD and all of these stocks, you know, I think on AMD, I'm up like almost 80% currently. Um, there was one stock that I was up like insane amounts. I think it's Tesla currently, like 100% up and things. And you just generally won't see that with dividend stocks. So try to have a balance and you can be more on one side than the other, but it's important to have both. Now, the next lesson is something that we should also apply to life. And that is, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. And I've learned this lesson the hard way recently. I invested a lot of money into a crypto scheme thing that ended up to be a scam. They've basically scammed all of us and I sort of got sucked in by the premise of what it was going to be, which was going to be like daily income and all sorts. And when you read it, it all sounded great and it made sense, but they've essentially just completely rug pulled and I've lost two and a half thousand pounds, which is insane. There tends to be a lot of hype at certain times about certain like stocks. And there's been plenty of times where I've invested based on hype and 
nothing has come of it. And, you know, I've mentioned in one of my videos, um, I don't tend to promote these things, by the way, on my channel. This is just risks I take personally. But I have mentioned in like one video, I think, that I've invested into HCMC, which I knew was extremely high risk and I was completely fine with that. But again, it was one of those things where it was like, oh, you know, you can make like tens or hundreds of thousands if it goes up to the predicted price. And, you know, it could have, but it didn't. And now I'm 80% down. So thankfully I didn't invest too much into that one, but I do think it's important to take risks. And that is another lesson. I, when I first started out, I was very, very risk shy. I just didn't want to take any risk at all. Um, which I think is natural when you are a beginner. But I do think it's really important to take those risks. However, make sure that you are fully aware of how much money you're putting into them and just see it as like a night out. So just think, okay, I'm spending this money on a night out. I'm never seeing it again. And if it works, it works. If not, then at least you weren't like crying that you've lost all that money. So leading on from that is that you need to be able to step out of your comfort zone once in a while. What I'm saying there is, you know, I think as everyone feels, I wish I had invested in Bitcoin back in the day, but it wasn't in my comfort zone. I completely didn't understand cryptocurrency, so I just refused to invest in it. I just wish that I had stepped out of my comfort zone, learned a bit more about it and you know, I'm not saying invested thousands of pounds, but just a little bit. The next lesson is don't try to time the market. Honestly, so many people try to do this and so many people fail. And there are actually studies that have been done that show that over the long term, the people that dollar cost average into positions are the ones that are the best off. So honestly, I would just say, you know, I'm going to invest X amount of money, every week or every month. And I'm, I'm saying that it doesn't have to be the same amount every time, obviously, but don't just think, oh, I'm just going to hold on to this money until there's a dip or until this happens, because over time you actually miss out on a lot of the gains. So don't try to time it, just enter. The next lesson that I've learned is that diversification is key, but you don't want to over diversify. So I've gone from having like so many positions to still having a lot of positions. Like there are people who are still thinking I have too many positions and that's fine. Investing is a very, very individual thing. And I just think that there's a balance of, you know, are you able to keep up with that many companies and having that protection of, well, what if that sector goes down? this one might go up and, and things like that. So for me, diversification is key, both in stocks, but also sectors and asset classes. So, you know, you might wanna have a couple stocks in healthcare, for example, but you might also wanna have some stocks in tech and renewable energy. But again, those are all stocks, right? So you might also want to consider investing in real estate and, I don't necessarily mean you have to buy houses, but you know, something like a REIT where it is a stock in a way, but the income that they get comes from rent. So it's almost, almost like investing into property. There's also things like gold and silver where you can either buy the actual gold or silver, or you can buy ETFs. So there are ways around it, but I think it's important to have that diversification as well. The last lesson that I've learned is about compound interest. And honestly, I honestly wish that I had understood compound interest years ago, or at least at the start of my journey, because I would have been investing a lot more, a lot sooner if I had really understood that concept. Honestly, compound interest is the one thing that they should learn in school or teach in school rather, because it's like magic. It is honestly a wonder of the world. And if you don't know what it is, look it up, learn about it, because it will make you want to invest everything you have, which you obviously shouldn't do. Okay, guys, that's it. So those are my top lessons that I've learned in the last two years of investing. Let me know if you have any others that I haven't mentioned. 
that you've learned that you think will be useful for people who are investing or starting out and things like that. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.